Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're talking about the moon. We're going to be discussing these unusual dark patches on the moon and try to figure out where they actually came from and why is it that only one side of the moon has them. Welcome to What The Math. Now this might look familiar to you, this is what the moon looks like from pretty much most um, locations on Earth, and these dark spots are also very familiar to us as well. Now how did they actually form? I'm going to have you guess it first. Do you think it was formed through some sort of a collision with very 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 large amounts of bodies, just like you see on the screen right now? Or do you think it was formed through some sort of unusual activity on the surface of the moon that was not related to these collisions? Or do you think that it was formed by the sun? Well, take a guess. What do you think? Let me actually show you what the other side of the moon looks like, because in most cases, the vast majority of people today have no idea what the so-called dark side of the moon looks like. Now, the dark side of the moon is not actually dark. As a matter of fact, it gets just as much light as the other side, the one that we're familiar with. This is what the current uh, representation of the moon on the other side looks like, and we usually refer to this side as the far side, with the, this being the near side, because it literally is the far side and never really uh, comes closer to Earth than it currently is. This side we never get to see because the moon is tightly locked to our planet, so only this side with its strange patches right here is visible to us. And so for this reason, many people assume that moon actually looks like this from all sides, but it doesn't. The other side, as you can kind of see, is much brighter, much wider, and also doesn't seem to have any of those dark maria as, as they're known. Now, the word maria uh, actually is Latin for seas. So a long time ago, people actually thought that this is what the uh, lunar oceans look like. They literally thought that these were lakes and oceans. They're not. As a matter of fact, they're just rock. They're basaltic rock. The type of rock that you can also find near most volcanoes on Earth. Specifically, currently, there's a lot of basaltic rock being formed on Hawaii Island. Now, oh wow, look at that moon in the background. We've completely destroyed it. That's the other moon that we had in the beginning. What exactly is happening on the moon here? Why is it that one side is so typical of a moon in our solar system, basically this is a face of many other moons in our solar system, but the other side, this side right here, looks nothing alike. Why, why does it have these dark patches? What's with those patches and why is it that there are so many of them? As a matter of fact, about 31% of the entire uh, surface right here that you're looking at is covered in these dark patches. You don't really find them in pretty much most of the other objects in our solar system. So what's happening here? And the answer to this is actually a little bit counterintuitive. It took a little bit of digging and learning about how and what forms these types of rocks to actually figure it out. Uh, the scientists uh, who studied the rocks, the moon rocks specifically, discovered that, well, first of all, these rocks, these basaltic rocks, are definitely the result of volcanic eruptions. In other words, it was not the collisions. It was actually eruptions. Volcanoes. It was a lot and a lot of volcanoes. And we even see the uh, signs of volcanism still today if we actually look closer on the surface of the moon. Now, these volcanoes uh, were not just typical mountains. They were actually basaltic volcanoes where basically the entire moon approximately 3 to 3.5 billion years ago looked very different. And let me actually just demonstrate by making it look this way first. We're going to simulate these volcanoes by essentially colliding an object with the moon, just to sort of demonstrate what the entire surface uh, that was facing planet Earth looked like. So this is what uh, you would see in the night skies of early Earth about 3 billion years ago. The moon would actually be almost completely red, or at least 30% red. The huge, huge part of it was essentially always bright and always on fire. Interestingly, this could also provide some sort of 
heat and some sort of um, illumination for early organisms on Earth as well. But we don't really know what exactly or what kind of effect this exactly had on our planet. What we do know though is that this lasted for many billions of years. And uh, we even think, or at least seem to uh, detect, even earlier volcanic eruptions, as early as about 2 million years ago. This implies that the moon was, ac was actually volcanic for billions of years. For many, many years, it basically had this really cool glow on the surface. But only one side of the moon. Why is it? Well, it's not really entirely yet understood why this happened. But the assumption is that, based on the observation of various materials on the surface of the moon, we discovered that everything with the side that sort of has those mares on it seems to also have a lot of so-called thorium. Thorium is actually a relatively um, interesting radioactive element that is also um, possibly responsible for heating up the moon. So, for some unknown reason, and this is still not entirely understood, this side of the moon had a lot of radioactive material in it, this side had almost none. Now, this may be because of the way the moon formed, this may be because it just was luck, but this side had a lot more material that as it started to essentially decompose into more stable elements, in other words, as the nuclear material started to slowly release huge amounts of energy, it actually warmed up this side of the moon and initiated the volcanic age on the moon. The entire surface started to be covered by uh, the early signs of volcanoes and basically then was this. It was all molten lava everywhere. Basaltic lava that is quite common on Earth, but was a lot more common on the moon back then. All of this was essentially formed through uh, the super hot layers of radioactive materials that were decomposing and creating a lot, of, a lot of energy on that particular side of the moon. But the other side stayed cool. As a matter of fact, the other side had almost none of this. It had almost no volcanoes, it had almost no volcanic activity and was much cooler than the side facing the Earth. And obviously with time, as the volcanoes disappeared and as uh, the uh, volcanic rock solidified, you started getting the picture that you get today. It basically all became this relatively dark patch or patches that are visible from Earth today. Now, obviously this may have turned out differently for the moon, especially if the material was more widespread or if some of the material was also deposited on the other side. But that's not really the point. The point is that during this activity and during this period, Moon may also have had a lot of other materials that were released from the inside and from the upper mantle uh, area of the Moon, including, of course, water. As a matter of fact, a lot of scientists they think that um, during this period, because of all of the volcanoes and volcanic eruptions, the volcanoes may have generated some sort of a thin atmosphere, so Moon may have also have had some sort of atmosphere, but also possibly even liquid water flowing somewhere on the surface. A lot of this um, is or cannot really be proven until we go back to the Moon and study some of the rocks in more detail, but it's based on the observations, and the observations indicate that that the moon may also have had water and other elements such as atmosphere. Whether this is true or not, only the future will tell and future research and possibly future scientific uh, basis on the moon that will allow us to study what's actually happening underneath the crust. But for now though, we know for a fact that there were volcanoes on the moon and we also seem to see some signs of water. So hopefully from this video you'll learn where these unusual dark patches on the moon came from. And now you know that these are not really uh, related to craters, they're not related to collisions. They're actually related to very large volcanoes that were located on the moon billions of years ago. But only on one side. Anyway, thank you for watching guys, I'll see you tomorrow. Come back tomorrow to learn something else and subscribe if you still haven't. Maybe even consider supporting this channel on Patreon and definitely come back tomorrow. Space out, and as always, bye bye.